on Thursday, September 24th from 7 to 8 p.m. This Tuesday, September 8th, there will be a consecration to Jesus through Mass. You can access it on your phone or mobile device during Mass. Please welcome our new parochial vicar, Father Julius Kaburu. This is his first weekend with our Good Shepherd family. Bulletins are near the gate exit. Please take a copy of this week's bulletin or visit our website for more information about our parish community. Please silence your devices as a sign of reverence for God and respect for one another. Our readings today work together to teach us about the real obligations of the law, which include gently correcting one another so that our communities may be in harmony. Paul explains how we must do this and do all things with love. And Jesus promises to remain with us always. Please stand now for our opening hymn. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you all in our evening Mass this Sunday. We thank God for enabling us to see this day. It's a very beautiful day. And we are here to praise, to thank, to honor, and give him glory. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now acknowledge our sins so that we may be worthy to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have great sins in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done. In and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through the most fault. Therefore, I ask to bless and may ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord of mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your greater glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. 
for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive through freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading is taken from Ezekiel. If you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, I will hold you responsible for his death. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, pardon not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The second reading is a letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. 
If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. As you heard, I'm Father Julius Kiogora Kaburu. Julius Kiogora are my names. Kaburu is my father's name. In our community, we are named after three names. I come from Africa, a country called Kenya. Probably some of you, they have heard about Kenya. That is where I am born and raised, from a Christian family, a family of four siblings and two parents, that is my father and my mom. I am the oldest in the family, and the one who follows me is my sister. She is married with the two kings, boy and a girl. The other who follows my sister is my brother, also married with one kid. And there is another one, the youngest in our family of 17 years old. That one came after we had gone <laughs> out of the family. I was in the seminary when I heard that I have a younger brother. I said, wow, welcome, younger brother. <laughs> And then God is the one who knows why he came. <laughs> so I was ordained as a priest in the year 2010, December 18th. Actually, I'm going to celebrate 10 years as a priest this year, year at Good Shepherd, if all everything goes on well. <laughs> so I was a priest for 10 years before I came, nine years before I came here. I have, served with, I have served in so many parishes as a parochial vicar and one parish as a pastor for five years before I came in America. Uh, previously, I was working at St. Joseph Lincoln. I arrived in America last, last, last year, September 27. So you can see only 11 months, young, being here in America. I've never been uh, in America before. So I'm learning so many things. Everything is new to me, food, people, language, anyway. You know, I speak, uh, in Kenya, the English is British. But when I came to America, I found, oh, the English of America <laughs> is too hard, but I'm trying. <laughs> I have a teacher who is trying to take me through the, yeah, so that at least I will be like a, a real American. So thank you, that is part of my history, my part of the story. The other story I will talk later. Let us go back to our homily. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is seen that a problem is not really a problem if it can be solved by money. That is quite true. Because as long as the solution to a problem is money, then 
The question is whether there is money or not. If, uh, so if the problem is anger, and what is needed will be money to buy the food, and the problem is solved. It is almost as straightforward as that. That can be applicable to almost any physical and material problem. If money can solve, then it is not really that big or that serious as a problem. But a more complex matter would be human relationship problems. As we know by now, human relationships are so complex. And if there are problems, money may only solve part of the problem, but certainly not the whole problem. Especially so when we try to correct someone or tell that person that what he or she is doing is wrong. You cannot use money to correct someone who has done, who is doing something wrong. We all know how difficult that can be. In the gospel of today, Jesus gives us a rather straightforward method of correcting someone of his or her error. Initially, it is one on one, maybe sitting together, maybe husband, uh, husband and wife correcting one another, or maybe a brother to a brother correcting one another, or a neighbor to a neighbor. And if that does not work, then two or three others are called upon. And if that still does not work, then it will have to involve the community. And finally, if all that does not solve the problem, then that person is to be treated, uh, treated like a pagan or a task collector. That seems straightforward enough, but does that help it or treating the person as a pagan or a task collector, cutting him or her off and not bothering that person anymore? We need to listen to Jesus as he says this. I tell you solemnly, once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. That's a very important verse in our gospel today. We, now we are meeting here. And our meeting, our gathering is different from other gatherings. Ours is to worship. It is not a gathering of political, it's not a political arena, no. Ours is to worship. And we are told that where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, God is there. So in our gathering here, we have God. God is with us. Now the question is, what are you telling him? Have you something to tell him this evening? Or we came blindly without knowing where we are going? That's a question we have to ask yourself this evening. Tell him something. Because he says that whatever you tell me, I'm going to grieve you. What Jesus said makes us aware of the power of intercession. Even if it is only two or three who are gathered in Jesus' name because he promised that he will be there. The mission of the church and our mission is for the conversion and the salvation of sinners and non-believers. We must believe that such powers of sinners and non-believers are heard by Jesus because he said that when two or three agree to ask anything, then it will be granted by God. So we are here, my brothers and sisters, with our prayers. Praying, telling God, oh my God, thank you. Thanking him. Others, they have a problem. They want to tell him that, God, help me. I'm suffering. So in an occasion like this one, let us have something to tell God. Because he's saying that where two or three are gathered in the name, 
in his name he is with us now as we pray do we have faith in our prayer or whatever you are praying do we trust god we know sometimes we put uh, we, we we try to test god with our prayers yes we test him we try him god i'm praying this if he doesn't answer me then i'm going to quit i'm going to go away from you don't try god don't put him into test tell him whatever you are telling him with faith and leave it to him maybe you may come immediately or you may come another time because god does not come immediately neither does he come, uh, delay he has his own time he has his own time so don't put him in trust just pray leave it to him and he is going to act on, the, on that because he has said he said that he is saying that where two or three are gathered i am with them and whatever they ask i will give them and i will be with them so trust those ones and then make a good prayer to him pray for yourself and pray for the other people because here we are talking about the conversion of other people even of the sinners not only you alone even other people because here today we are told correct one another correct your brother when he goes wrong if you doesn't correct that person and dies of, of his, the sins, you are going to be blamed by God. So if you know somebody is not going astray, take a step forward to correct him or her so that he may change his life or her life. Then if you does not correct him and he dies of the sins, then you are, to, you are the one to be blamed by God. But if you tell him or her, and it doesn't change then for you you are okay in the eyes of god so let us now try to help one another in this journey which which god has given us we are all of us traveling on the same lane we are all of us going towards heaven but let us now bring all of us into the boat let us bring everybody into this journey young old every kind of a person we have in this world our brothers and our sisters, our neighbors. Let us trust in Jesus, in his promise. Let us offer up our prayers that at this Mass, as well as during the online community prayers. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and on earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before ages, gone from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things who are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the one to come. Amen.
draw together in faith. We bring our needs to God with confidence and hope. For the church, may the Lord graciously preserve and protect her as a sign of his truth to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all nations, may their leaders be governed by the power of the Holy Spirit in love of and service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who lost their homes and livelihood in the recent wildfires, ravaging many parts of the diocese, that they receive the help needed. May those who have died receive God's mercy, and may all those fighting the fires be protected from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who continue to suffer in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks 19 years ago, for all who lost their lives on that day and afterward in our nation and abroad as a result of those attacks and for renewed resolve to work toward peace in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially Mao Nguyen, Yen Nguyen, and for all whose death was caused by the coronavirus, may they rest in the peace of God's perfect love let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have recently died in our parish family, namely Dionysio Tonel, may he know God's perfect peace in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We now pray silently for our own intentions and those held deep within our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of love and truth, you lead us deeper into relationship with you through every prayer we offer. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, 
who gives us the gift of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim holy holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my, of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have earned us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis and our Bishop Jaime and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles, and all the saints who have Christ throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
and another cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Evils in our heart, evils in our families where we come from, evils in our society, in our nation and the whole world. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your way, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say a word, and my soul shall be you. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and adorn with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gift that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God the Father bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Have a blessed evening and a blessed night. Good night. Good
So, yeah. so leave the cord? Oh yeah, get the fuck to the end. Okay, so just yeah. leave the cord. Yeah. So we'll put the mics in. Yeah. Oh. Take your brother's seat and leave him on the floor. Yeah. I was at the uh, I was at King Robert. Uh, over there by Freeport. 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 Yes, I'll take two. They don't need music. Eight o'clock. I was over there. Ten o'clock.
Yeah.